Oh no, Labour have destroyed documents that could have revealed Angela Rayner's living arrangements. Is that the same shredder that got rid of Nicola Sturgeon's COVID WhatsApp messages? Why can't all important political documents stay in the cloud, just like your holiday snaps from Tenerife in 2011 when you had a bit of a beer belly and burnt arms? It's funny, isn't it, how these politicians get rid of any material that could bring them embarrassment or get them in trouble. If only we could do the same when filling out our tax returns. Sir Keir Starmer has been getting very butch lately. Last week, he said that he would happily press the nuclear button. Bit of a U-turn following his enthusiastic support for Jeremy Corbyn to become prime minister just a few short years ago. The same Corbyn who wanted to get rid of nuclear weapons and refused to confirm that he would press the nuclear button if Britain were under attack. Well, the latest is that Starmer wants to build on the green belt, which many imagine is sunny pastures, but much of which is in fact a glorified car park. It's Rishi Sunak who had to embarrassingly U-turn with his own plans to build on the green belt following objections from local Tories. So if a likely Labour government is going to build baby build, then I say bring it on. Get the spades out, the concrete mixers and the diggers. Starmer the builder. Can he fix it? Starmer the builder. Yes, he can. We need more houses. Even a children's cartoon character could tell you that. Now, I was on air last weekend when news broke that Israel was under attack from Iran with over 150 drones. It turns out that the vast majority of them were shot out of the sky. That's the last time that the regime in Tehran will buy their drones from Argos. Meanwhile, Israel, with one of the best uh, equipped militaries in the world, this week responded rather conservatively, launching a modest strike on Iran with slightly better drones, I'm guessing from John Lewis. No reports of damage or casualties. And let's be clear, as Israel have demonstrated in recent months, they can cause damage if they want to, but they chose not to. That is significant. Yes, this was a symbolic response. And I think measured. I think it was the right thing to do. A bit like when you're down the pub and you say to the bloke next to you, you spilled my pint. And he says, well, you were looking at my girlfriend. Whilst tensions in the Middle East grow by the day, it looks like this tit-for-tat war has played out for now. And rather than sparking World War III, it's been a welcome example of handbags at dawn. Come on, lads. We've all had a drink. It's time for everyone to book a cab and go home. Who knew that locking healthy, perfectly fit people up in their homes and paying them to do nothing for three years in an attempt to stop a seasonal respiratory virus would turn the country into a bunch of layabouts. But even the prime minister, who in a couple of months time is about to suffer his own bout of worklessness, is concerned about the millions of people who are now not active in the economy. This is all fueled, of course, by numpty GPs doling out sick notes like Mick Jagger signing autographs at a concert. It's obvious that whilst some people really cannot work and must have our support, there are plenty of others who are quite happy for the state to bankroll their lives. The problem is that if we all did that, the country would fall over. It's obviously not sustainable. And I think you'd find without such a generous safety net, those mental health issues would very quick, quickly clear up. Having nothing to eat or having no roof over your head is likely to cure any feelings of doom and gloom as a result of too much time spent on Twitter or Instagram. The empathy and generosity of our welfare state, which I passionately believe in, are being exploited by too many people at your and my expense. Britain isn't working and eventually we will all pay the price.